Wait a second. Let's see how we can do that in Unity. All right, we finally back in Unity once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be figuring out how you can wait for seconds in Unity with three different methods. So there's basically, roughly speaking, three different methods which we can use to wait for, well, X amount of seconds to do something. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to use the already created rotation scene over here. This is available for you for download in the description below as a Unity asset package. So no worries at all. What we will need is another script. So we're going to right click, create new C sharp script. And this is going to be the waiting for seconds script. Before we open this up, let's also add this to the asteroid right here. Very important that we add this. And then once we've added this, we can now go into Visual Studio and actually see what we can do. So for this, we're once again going to use an enum here. In this case, this is going to be the counting method. And like I said, there's going to be three of them. The first one is going to be the frames. Second one is going to be a coroutine. And the third one is going to be the invoke. So what does that mean? Well, well, let's start at the frames. The first thing we will do is we have a float counter over here. This is going to start at zero. This is going to count. And then we'll have another private float. And that is going to be the time, zero. The time, I'm going to call this time to act though. So this is going to be how many seconds we're going to wait until something happens. Let's just for the sake of argument say one second over here. I think that that's going to be okay. For all of this, we also need a serialized field over here. And that is going to be the private counting method over here of counting method. We don't need to initialize this to anything because it's going to default to the frames anyway. So that's going to be okay. And we also going to need the rotating movement over here. This is going to be the rotating movement. That is the script from the asteroid that's going to allow us to rotate it because I wanted to basically turn on and off the auto rotation of the movement there. You can, of course, instead of doing that, also just output something in the console, in the debug. That would also work. Or you can do it the same way that I'm doing it right here. Then we want to say rotating movement is equal to get component of rotating movement right here. There you go. And that should be fine. And then the counting, right? So the frames here, this is going to be a counting. We're basically going to count the frames, so to speak. This is going to be happening in the update method. If counting method is equal to counting method dot frames, then we will proceed over here. And what we want to check is we want to say, hey, if the counter, right? So we're if our counter is smaller than time to act, then we know that we still have to count. And for this, it suggests this exactly correct. We basically want to just say counter plus equals time dot delta time. And this is going to basically add one second every second. And the awesome thing about that is then once the counter has reached time to act or is above it, then we can just reset the counter equal to zero. And then we can go to the rotating movement script over here, control click on this. And here in the auto rotate, we have the toggle auto rotation over here. This is a private method. Let's just make this public pretty much everything we need. So this is going to be the rotating movement dot toggle auto rotation. There you go. And that's going to now toggle the automatic rotation once every second. And that is actually literally all that we need to do. So we can go back over here, making sure that on the asteroid 2, we got frames selected. And if I start this after one second of wait time, it's going to start moving. And then after another second, it's going to stop. And then it's going to start again after a second and stop and so on and so forth until, well, I mean, basically until the end of time. That's the general idea. So that is pretty freaking cool if you take a look at it. And there we go back to the beginning. That's pretty awesome. So that is the idea. And of course, if you were to change the number of seconds that it's going to take, right? So if we were to say 0.25, then it's only going to wait for a quarter of a second and start and stop again. So then it's going to look kind of like this. So that is, of course, something that you can change in the code pretty easily. That's pretty awesome. We're going to keep it for one second just so that it's a little bit easier to keep track of. What is the next way? The next way is a coroutine. So coroutines are a little more complicated. However, they are also fine. So for a coroutine, we need an I enumerator. We're going to call this the toggle rotation coroutine. This is the, this is the name of the method over here. And for a I enumerator, you basically have to yield and return something. Now, what's really cool is that when you do yield, you can return. You can return something. And the thing you can return, you can wait for, wait for seconds. You can see right here. And we can literally just put in not the counter, but you actually want to put in time to act because that's, of course, the seconds that we have to wait, right? This is going to wait sort of asynchronously, quote unquote, for this many seconds on this line. And then it's going to do whatever this thing is afterwards. So then we can say rotating movement, toggle, auto rotation. However, if we were to call this, right, if we were to start this coroutine, this would only happen once. Instead of itself, we can then say start coroutine and then we can just pass itself into it. And then it's just going to continuously work until you are going to stop all coroutines. And to do this for the first time in the start method, 
we're going to say if the counting method is equal to not frames, but we actually want this to be equal to coroutine, then we're going to say start coroutine, passing in the toggle coroutine right here with this. And there you go. This is going to now do the same thing with the coroutine. And while we're at it, let's just also do the invoking because that's very, very easy. So if in the start method, if counting method is equal to invoke, then we will say invoke repeating. We then have to do toggle with invoke. That's going to be a method we're going to create in just a moment. And then this is time to act. And this is time to act as well. There you go. So this is one of the things that's a negative. We're going to go through the positives and negatives in just a moment as well. So this is going to be the void toggle with invoke rotating movement toggle auto rotation there we go so that is going to be all three different methods of rotating so let's take another look let's change it from frames to coroutine and see what happens so you can see the same thing happens we are waiting one second and then we're basically going for one second literally the same thing what i i highly recommend you don't change the counting method while the game is running, so always close out of the game and then change the method right here. Otherwise, you might run into issues. So let's take a look at the invoke. You're going to see it has, I mean, pretty much the exact same idea, of course, because, well, they're all methods to do almost exactly the same thing, basically. So do keep that in mind that it's basically going to be the same thing every time. But there you go. So what are some of the pros and cons for each different method? I'm just going to copy over some of my comments that I've made so that we can basically go through this. Those are going to be available to you in the description as well, of course, in the GitHub repository, as well as for download. So you can see the frames, th this is really easy to use, right? Overall, this is pretty easy to use. It's sort of understandable, right? You just have two floats. And also it will stop when you set the time scale to zero, which is can be a quite useful thing that you might want to have. Now, it can look quite convoluted depending on how complicated you're going to make it. If it's just one counter and one time to act, it's pretty much always going to look kind of like this, which is fine. And it also might not be the most efficient. So do keep that in mind. When it comes to the coroutine, the really cool thing here is that you can pass in additional parameters. This would be in the rotation coroutine right here, right? Our I enumerator. You can pass in any types of parameters that we might want which is the thing that we can't do with the invoke because the invoke here is called with a string, which is also one of the really big cons for invoke because it is quite error prone because if you have a typo here in the string and you know then tracking that down can be quite annoying however it is a little bit easier to use however it is inflexible error prone and also it uses reflection so it just has a worse performance so overall i highly recommend you choose the coroutine or counting the frames depending on what you're doing invoking i really only would do if there's like no other way but usually the other two ways would work as well but you have seen all three ways of how you can wait for seconds. That's pretty crazy indeed. And you can see it's actually not that complicated. Also, if you can't see something in the inspector, maybe this video will help you out. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.